Hello everyone, Medic Level Up here. We're back again with another video. Today's video is going to be a ventricular enlargement and we're going to be talking about only right ventricular hypertrophy this time. The next video after this is going to be left ventricular hypertrophy. So in a normal heart, the left ventricle is predominant. So we know that the vector of the current forces are directed from right to left. But we're going to draw a heart over here, which is which has right ventricular hypertrophy. So you can see essentially that the right ventricle is pretty much as thick as the left ventricle. So remember the principle from our previous videos, more muscle, more current. So when there is more right ventricular hypertrophy, the net current moves from left to right towards the right ventricle because there's more spread of current inside the hypertrophied right ventricle and you're going to see a large amount of current in the right sided chest leads which are v1 and v2 now let's draw a normal one so you got a small positive r wave deep negative s wave and then pretty much similar in v2 as well because most of the current was going away from the right ventricle in a normal heart and into the left ventricle but in a hypertrophied heart where there's right ventricular hypertrophy, you see tall positive R waves initially because the current is moving towards V1 and V2. Now, how much amplitude is necessary to be diagnosing RVH and an ECG? Well, there's no specific cutoff, but I want you to understand that if the R wave is more than the S wave and amplitude in the chest leads in V1 and V2, then you can say that this ECG is suggestive of right ventricular hypertrophy. So we're just going to measure these up. You can see tiny R complexes in a normal heart, but in a heart with right ventricular hypertrophy, you can see tall positive R wave complexes in RVH. And these are definitely bigger than the depth of the S waves in right ventricular hypertrophy. Now with right ventricular hypertrophy, obviously you can see some degree of right atrial abnormalities as well. So you can see the characteristic pattern of P pulmonal, which I've discussed in previous videos. Now strain is another terminology which shows that the ventricle is under pressure, it's under strain. How do you see strain? Well, it's ST depression with an asymmetric T wave inversion. So let's draw a strain pattern. So you have a P wave, QRS complex, and then ST depression, and then asymmetric T wave inversion. Now this is strain, but there are also variants of strain. So you've got ST depression, asymmetric T wave inversion, and then again, pretty much just a flat STT segment. So these are known as either strain patterns, or you can call them strain equivalent. And these basically increase the sensitivity of diagnosing RVH on an ECG. Remember that with right ventricular hypertrophy, you are always going to see these changes in the right sided chest leads. That's a given because the current is coming towards V1 and V2. Now, again, there's numerous causes for right ventricular hypertrophy. You can have pulmonary causes. You can have tricuspid disease. So the pulmonary causes are going to include emphysema, COPD, pulmonary embolism, asthma, and you can pretty much have uh, cardiomyopathies as well, which can be dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. I'm sorry, you can't see those over here when I write them. Now the next thing is uh, Shamrod sign. Shamrod sign is basically when you get a null vector in the lead one. Um, it's either you get really tiny QRS complexes or you're not even able to see them. Always try to interpret this within the clinical context. So this is suggestive of RVH, but it is very rare. Again, I cannot stress this enough. So always interpret right ventricular hypertrophy within the clinical context. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in another video. Godspeed.